to allow her to descend uh, further. Um, I would say that's the her, her carries the majority of the scientific packages. Right. And, uh, Manipulators, what her does all, the the stuff. Does all the fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and so on. And then Hercules can dive to about four thousand meters, is correct? Right? Yeah. Am I right? Okay. Right. Atlanta can go to six thousand meters. Oh what? Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Atlanta normally dives with little Hercules, we can also go to six thousand meters. But little Hercules is a smaller version of her. So at the where's your mic? Where's my mic? Yeah, can hardly hear you. Oh, really? yeah. How about What's now? All that? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Weird. Okay. It's like a raw salad sponge up there. Are these like holes or something? They look on like top? holes. Whoa, yeah. that's so funky. <laughs> so uh, to, to answer the question uh, just uh, briefly, if if Herc was connected directly to the vessel, it would be very difficult to maneuver um, on the seabed. You'd have the vessel mo motion uh, running down the umbilical and uh, pulling her all around the place. That's another one of those mushroom. Yeah, that's a raw salad. A raw salad? <laughs> raw salad. <laughs> yeah. Raw salad. It's vegan. I would actually like to manifest a nice salad. Like a kale yeah, salad. Yeah, me too. We're not going to see any raw salad, salad yeah. for another I want a two vegetable. Weeks. No. Is it this one, Jules? You definitely ran out of lettuce. Yeah, you cabbage. Get, you get kale, cabbage. Kale would have lasted. Thank you for helping me with this. No, no, no problem. A M P H I D. The sad part is that you don't know when it's going to be over. I so see. one day we just didn't have salad. Yeah, that's right. You've okay. Uh, I want to say no, <laughs> but uh, I'll look into it a little more. For our friends online, thank you so much for helping us um, with our IDs. Uh, keep them coming uh, and your questions as well. Oh, and don't forget, if you have missed our previous dives, um, Go to nautiluslive.org um, for our highlights. So we, we will be posting more highlights in the week to come. So stay tuned. Oh, and then a question from chat. Uh, can Hercules be used without the tow sled for shallower expeditions? How can shallow? Can Hercules be single body is kind of that question. I don't uh, think. Yeah. Is, we did okay. that in Catalina. Um, yeah. We left, we left, uh, I think I'm going to settle on to sit on deck. Okay. Very shallow. Do we After have an idea, Jules? <laughs> Zoom in? After much deliberation, <laughs> I think it's Hyalanema. That is a dead Paragorgia with zoanthids. Yes, indeed. Ready for a move. Perfect. Bridge nav. Oh boy. Let's do three zero meters. Big corals coming up. Five. Oh wow. Still cams getting a look at some bigger corals up ahead. Oh yes. We're at the end of the so. All right. I thought you were at 37 meters, or th like feet, 37 feet.
this is that same internodal bamboo. Can we zoom in? Yeah, there? it looks like it. Karachai said an A. Nodal or internodal? That is the question. It Look appears at that, to be like, nodal. Red stuff covering it. What's that? Look at that tangle of hydroids. Uh, crinoids. <laughs> yeah, what is the red? It's nodal, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Maybe even a squat lobster? Yeah. It looks like it's not in good health. <laughs> well, some Am parts. I wrong about that? That part definitely, but out here it seems okay. Oh, I meant the, the lobster. Oh, the squat lobster. lobster? Oh. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's fine. Hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> you really have to get them into the vet for a checkup. Yeah. Okay. Karatoi said nay. Nodal. Noted. Thank you. Okay. We got it. Thanks, folks. random question but the water made me think of this movie so it just um they just did the premiere and anybody gonna watch the little mermaid when we get to shore uh when it starts streaming yes <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it yeah. disney yeah, for sure. sure yeah the yeah the the live action it's disney though who made it's it it's disney yeah okay yeah. yeah i'd love to see it oh there's a victor gorgia oh yeah Hello. All right, what was the last movie you saw in the movie theater? Oh, wow. I saw it was a horror movie. Ooh. <laughs> um, I forget. OK. Mine was Back to the Future. No. <laughs> I'm sure I've seen something. <laughs> Paula, this is adorable. Thank you. Oh. Oh, wow. This is. Paula drew really a bamboo coral with a uh, panda. Yeah. Hold it up for the camera. Okay. Can you see it? Artwork oh, auction. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. There we go. Nautilus artwork <laughs> auction coming soon. We have another yep. submission. Can I pass it to you, Samantha? Sure. Oh. oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> That's really nice. Thank you. <laughs> Going on the wall. Oh, and it's signed, too. Perfect. Would you guys say that's nearly as good as TJ's, or? Uh, <laughs> they're actually in different categories. We have a best effort category. <laughs> then we have a artistic uh, contribution category. <laughs> I'll put it in the same uh, best effort as the eDNA drawing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the EDNA. Yeah. <laughs> <Speckles>. nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a magic eye. <laughs> Post it to hold it really close to see it. Can we zoom in, Dave? Uh, oh. Bathy Pathies. Speaking of Dave, still waiting on Dave's contribution to the art gallery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, haven't seen anything from well, Dave. Well, wait till he tidies up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> art contribution. I'll be hiding all the pens. Created <laughs> by Dave. That is. <laughs> is that just a regular rock? I think so. Oh. There are some cute little anemones. Oh, yeah. Or uh, maybe there's something else. I don't know. Ready oh. for another move? They almost look like hydroids. You bet. Great. 
bridge now. Any more on that thing? Nope. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Oh, it's an anemone. Oh, it wow. is. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Chris Gorgid. Janiculata. Oh. It is something. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Okay. What? We're gonna <laughs> need yeah, to look beautiful. at this. Is it one of those tube an yeah. anemones? Tube <laughs> Yeah. Whoa. What is that? It's a tube anemone. I've seen some. Oh, is it tube or is it, um... Oh, wow. Medusa. Yeah, that's <laughs> so beautiful. It's a great color. Whatever that. Yeah. Could you describe that color? What would you say? Is it, uh, it's gray purple. I don't even know. Dark it's purple. It's like purple well, velvet. Indigo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dusky, dusk, indigo. Dusk. Yeah. Wow, plum. that is such a beautiful shot. What was yours, Robert? And yeah, maybe it's not too dusky. Yeah, I go with dusky plum. Dusky wow. plum. This is what are we <laughs> buying dusky lipsticks plum. here? <laughs> it's like a couch color. Samantha, you said you don't think it's a tube anemone? Uh, I, I don't remember. Gaping I'm ma trying to. Okay. Gaping ma. <laughs> gaping um. ma. <laughs> <laughs> I love that color, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any guys in front of me. I don't remember. It, we've seen these in some places that are super common. Um, totally okay. like, you know what it I could be. I have a guess. Velvet Midnight. That's what I'm calling it. Velvet Midnight. Um, I mean, it looks like a, well. Uh, I would love to see the tube. base of it. Yeah. It could be, um, <laughs> how do you even say this? Actinernis. 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 TBD. Oh, it's waving to us. That is so beautiful. Can we pause for one second for still cam, if possible? It's got a white base. Bridge now. So Hold position, please. Oh, there's the base. Oh, perfect. You know, it's all about the oh, base. Somehow. Yeah, oh. okay. All about the base. I think that's it. Right. <laughs> okay, we got it. Thank got you. It. Um, so, uh, two by nine of nobilis. Is that a tube anemone? Um, please hold. It look like a tube to me. No, it doesn't. But it has the fleshy, long um, tentacles. Chat says ceranthid tube anemone. Uh, they can actually pop off and swim, not gracefully, but they can. <laughs> huh. I've seen it 20 or 30 plus birds hanging out before, yeah. which is a little messy, but 
fine. But I can't imagine what you what you all lived through <laughs> last time you were in this part of the world. No, I'm glad that Lila, who wasn't on the cruise, has also acknowledged that we shouldn't have the birds. Oh, I logically acknowledge it. <laughs> I still just kind of want to see she it. She was like, I saw, I was in the cruise afterwards. I saw them. They were all broken. <laughs> it's like, thank you. Oh. Thank you for acknowledging the trauma. <laughs> the pictures Steve sends around from them all just looking in the wet lab are just so cute. Oh all my the birds gosh, just no. sitting in the wet lab door staring <laughs> in the ship. You guys, the smell was something I have I never it. smelled before in I my be life. I believe it. I, <laughs> I got to go ashore at Johnston Atoll a few years ago, and I can imagine what it felt like. <laughs> it's one of the many reasons we're always happy for some rain on Palmyra. Yeah. yeah. You get a couple weeks of no rain, and the whole island starts to smell. <laughs> okay, what is this? A star? I think it's a brittle star on a dead stalk of some type. Uh, since we've been on watch, the temperature has been slowly increasing on in the water. We've gone from 2.18 degrees to like 2.22 degrees. <laughs> uh, and the oxygen concentration has been decreasing. We got on it was in the high 90s uh, micromoles per liter. And now it's in 92 micromoles per liter. Got another bamboo whip. Almost makes you feel like we're doing something. <laughs> it's the opposite of the van here. All right, science is good. Thank you. So what was the difference between last year's Palmyra cruise and far of expedition outcomes, like wanting to accomplish goals compared to this year's? Well, last year the weather was pretty bad. So there was a lot of dives that we weren't able to do. Um, and this year, I think we're trying to go back to some of those locations that we tried to hit last year, but we're unable to. Not all of the dives for this cruise, but some of them. Yeah, for the most part, we just took all of NA-110 and all of NA-137's undone dives <laughs> and just smushed them together for this project. Nice. Um, so the overall goals were very much this similar in terms of characterizing the area and better understanding the patterns of biodiversity and the um, helping collect some rocks so we can better understand the plate tectonic history of the area. The locations are a little bit different in that because of the weather and whatnot, um, they were driven into working in the monument um, extensively right around how, uh, how the bigger, sorry, uh, Kingman and Palmyra um, and got very little, I think one dive done out here in the outside the monument and so we are basically batting cleanup here, trying to um, expand the area that we have, it has decent level of dive coverage and pick up the project or the areas that those last two cruises were unable to um, do. And so far, just for, with, for, for the knock on wood, while we've lost uh, one dive day and the weather has been borderline, we have been able to get in the water most of the time. Yeah. And it looks like we've got a nice little weather window for the next few days at least um, to continue diving. We were also diving with Argus, which I think was kind of um, a struggle because Argus weighs a lot more. Okay, and maybe someone, ROV, Ren, or Dan can talk more about this, but um, I think it was putting a lot of tension on the winch. So that was also kind of an effect mm -hmm. too, that kind of prevented some things. And then also, of course, like the boobies. The booby popocalypse. Um, kind of prevented us from doing a couple dives for a couple days. Um, but like, I mean, I think the goals and objectives we we're trying to reach are generally all generally the same. Generally the same. Exploration. Yeah. Characteristics of the deep sea. Yeah. Um, I think what's 
this is gonna, <laughs> this is gonna sound so like specific. What is different is the scientists ashore, the samples that people are requesting are different between uh, <laughs> this dive and last dive. So last dive, I was actually collecting samples for my own, or last time we were out, I was collecting samples for my own research. Um, and then Amber Saravola, who's a volcanologist, was also looking for the rock samples. And then Beth Orcutt, um, who is a researcher, um, at Big Low, at Big Low, and has, was also the um, lead scientist on the cruise after the last Cayman and Palmyra cruise. Um, she also was interested in the ferromanganese crust, but mm -hmm. not for like the reasons I'm interested in it. She's interested in the microbes, so it was like all of the rocks. It was like three sam we needed like three sa samples from each rock sample, essentially. So that was one thing. And then Mary, who was a graduate student, and she was the uh, science manager in training on the last cruise. She was interested in sparsely branching corals for her own research. So she was looking at that, and I think the scientists ashore, uh, now well, Adam is interested in like some mm -hmm. of the rocks for his own stuff. Um, I think- Including a whale bone fossil. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I think there's some scientists ashore looking for otoliths or something in the sediment. Otolith in the sediment? Yeah. Whoa, okay. And then we're also picking up some, I think, some cor coral samples for uh, Steve as well. So those are some more kind of specific differences. So at the end of um, the expedition, all the SCFs have to make like a couple of photo albums for the website. So I think we want to do one on all the rocks. So we will be getting your input on like, what is this? What is this? Tell us oh, about yeah. this. I mean, also Adam is, I think Adam is literally characterizing every rock as well. Sweet. I figured between the two of y'all guys, we would have it down pat. He's like, oh, you should start characterizing the rocks. It's like, I have not thought about that <laughs> in years. <laughs> uh -huh. So Dan, there's something purple right over here. I think it's just, let me take a look. That's a cool purple. You want to uh, stop her up there, Lynette? Yeah, I know. Let's say, uh, Okay, yeah, I'm in there. Another chunky holothorian? Or yes. excuse me, husky, oh, husky. Maybe, yeah, chunky boy. Okay, go push it out a little more. Definitely holothorian, but looks a little different to me. Yeah, it has some spikies. It's a little more opaque. This one looks like it's napping. This one looks like it's getting up from a nap. <laughs> oh, look, it's showing it's us like, its bottom. It's like, hello, who just woke me up? <laughs> See if it swims. This isn't one I would expect to swim a lot, but it's obviously perturbed by our, us being here, so it might jump off. I mean, yeah, we woke it up from its nap to tell a joke. Doesn't even remember the <laughs> joke we told it. <laughs> Is it going to fall over? Are we going to get to see the underside? Ooh. Sometimes my dog gets so excited it falls over when it tries to greet me too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like this. 
Not as slow, it's though. It's uh, full zoom there, is it? Roger. Is that its anus or its mouth? I'm, I'm not sure. It's an orifice. Oh, I kind of want it to fall over. Is there any reason it would be doing this kind of as like a protective, like it knows that something's there and it's doing this to look bigger or something? I do not know. The only defense mechanism I'm aware of these really is to run away. Shallow water ones will sometimes um, invert their intestines, but I've never seen a deep water one do that. Shallow ones will also actually lose sides of its, um, just will slough part of its skin off oh. sometimes to distract. Um, but uh, I, I've never seen a deep one do anything other than just try and swim away. Well, I think that's all we're going to see from it. <laughs> all right, pilot, I think we are done when we're uh, moving on. Let it go back to its nap. <laughs> like Lynette, just pull the curtain closed, ignore the person screaming at you outside. Looks like a mostly dead stunned sponge stalk. Might be a little bit of live tissue down at the bottom that has been now home to a bunch of brittle stars. What is uh, like these kind of whiter parts I at think the those bottom? Might be, Sorry. I think those might be a couple little sections of still alive tissue. Oh, okay. Oh. Nice. Push in there a bit. Oh, no. Oh. Brittle, brittle, brittle star down. Yep, looks like it's got two little chunks uh, that are still alive. And then what's that kind of orange blobby? I think, we're, I think that's thing. the backside of a Venus flight trap anemone. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right, we're good, thanks. All right, okay, it can go away. So the Little Mermaid just came out on Friday night. We have our first viewer that's seen it. Oh, nice. I'm so jealous. That is like, there's a couple things that I miss seeing being on the ship and getting yeah. to watch the Little Mermaid is one of them. All right, so secret of Brian's life that you're all gonna judge before. I've never seen the Little Mermaid because when I was a kid, it came out and my parents took me and Ursula scared me so badly we had to leave the theater. And I have refused <laughs> to watch it ever since. <laughs> Suck no. sponge, please. <laughs> I refuse to laugh at your childhood pain, Brian. Know, Unlike the other two people on the back I'm row. I'm not to, but it's just funny. Because it's like the irony. Uh, push in a bit there, there. You would think because you study the deep sea that maybe now, or the fact uh, that you have a daughter. <laughs> well, the daughter's only 19 months old, so. I think I was like 19 months old when I saw Tarzan in theaters for the first time or something like that. I feel like that was one of the last good Disney cartoons because then they just kind of switched all to Pixar. Uh, what about Mulan? So I think this is Dictee Alice, which is a type of Euplectalid. Mulan came before Tarzan, right? 
Let me look. Tarzan movie. Oh, I'm totally kidding. But I think we've got what we need. Thank you. Roger, I'm just going to have a peek down at sure. uh, Oscar on that. I can kind of see the pink in there that looks like the, a shrimp. Okay, just kidding. I must have been three years, two and a half years old. No, almost three years old when I watched it. Just kidding. Okay. Go ahead. Go a little bit. Just a little bit. Sorry. Almost had it. Choked. No, oh, the light is fine. I do really love the Not Little Mermaid, the 90s cartoon. Get it. You're right, Mulan came out before Tarzan. One year before. Uh, I put too much uh, down dress there. There has to be movies. another animated movie that came out after Tarzan. Okay, try that. Oh, Mulan too. Well, I mean like the last of their good ones. I like their Pixar movies. No, I'm not saying there's anything wrong, but... There. Now they've like changed the animation, like the even not just Disney, there's like Disney Pixar, which is separate. Mm -hmm. But even just like the regular Disney movies are like Tangled or Frozen. Frozen is it? Like the animation yeah. is so different. Very much so. That's why I'm like, it was, I think That's Tarzan was focused. one of the last good cartoons. There you go. Before we leave, I'd like to rack focus back to whatever the little things in there to get your, get your beauty shot here, but. Um, Sorry, what do you want to see? Uh, the two, I don't know what they are, but the two things at the top before we leave, since we're already here, let's just shift focus back once we get your, your beer oh, shot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can focus on the little guys behind the uh, behind the jail cell there. <laughs> I don't know what those are. Part of me, wants, part of me says barnacle, but I'm really not sure. All right, I think that's all we're going to get. All right, there. OK, can go away. Would you watch the live action Little Mermaid? Yeah, probably. I think that one might have a booby in it. It has some sort of bird. <laughs> it's a seagull. Oh, OK, never mind. <laughs> It's okay, if it has a I'll movie, I'm going to get traumatized for the live action one. <laughs> and everyone's allowed to laugh at me. <laughs> That's the same seagull that introduced uh, Ariel to the finger of Bobber. <laughs> Probably uh, come up another five as I come by you here. That would be my assumption, given right. what we've been seeing so far. The whips have pretty much all been bamboos. Push in just a bit. But I'm always waiting for that tricky primnoid whip to trip me up. There's some something next to it. Is that yeah, it? it looks like that Piranopathy's black coral we've been seeing. All right, that should probably be good enough for us. OK. So Coralie. Uh, I think you're right. In the new live action, they made Scuttle not a seagull, but a type of booby. Maybe a blue-footed mast, something. <laughs> Do a quick zoom there for me, Joe. Sponge. sponge with brittle star. Brittle star looks the same size as the sponge. <laughs> oh, it's a gannet. Scuttle okay. is now a gannet. What Take is a gannet? Boobies uh, are in the gannet family. Oh. oh. Boobies are a type of gannet. Oh, so it. 
Okay. I knew they're, so they're like a diving fish. Okay, cool. I don't think we get them in Texas. But let's find out. Uh, you can either tilt up or come up the other stars. Oh, we do get them. Okay. I have to tilt up a bit too. I'm getting out. We're making pretty good time to the top. <laughs> yes, we are gonna blow the schedule. We are definitely blowing the schedule for this one. But between the better weather allowing us to move more directly, and because uh, we originally had planned this to do a b whole bunch of tacking back and forth across this feature to keep our motions in line with the ship's heading more. Um, and then things are benign enough Should that we've been able to move there? directly um, to our kind of final goal. Oh. Ooh. That's a squat cool lobster color. or a corlivore? Yeah, it's a squat lobster. Um, oh, now I can see its arms better. Yeah. And on a black coral. This is probably a, just a slightly different color um, about the pathies. And I'm drawing a blank on the type of squat lobster. It's a fuzzy dude. Yeah. Okay, this is still a chrysostylid. Probably a gastrotychus. Uh, come down five minutes. A little bounce. Oh. Yes, sir. Full zoom there. Whoa. That is a hairy pink thing. Oh, you can see him waving his little antennas. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, this is probably Bathopathy's alternata. Hmm. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Yeah. Again, we're in this area. We've seen a couple of these littler sponges and corals here with already with full adult associates that are almost as big as their home. So, Ren, we have a question for you. How high does Atalanta stay above Hercules, and how high does Hercules stay above the sea floor? All right, science is happy when video is. That is very situational. Uh, usually, Herc will be not too far from the bottom. Okay, you can bottom. go away, please, thanks. And depending on how much uh, slack or tension Dan needs in the tether, Atalanta will, us or, yeah, Atalanta will usually aim for a delta depth of about 15 to 20 meters, but that number can change depending on specific maneuvers or situations. And sometimes with Dan, we end up being close to zero. <laughs> uh, Thanks, Red. Let me get out another 10. Roger. Not sure how much longer this tether is, but it seems to be, yeah. Why, Dan, why do the tethers come at different lengths? Because we have the same problem on Okeanos. When we change tethers, the, the tether would be different length. But I never actually ask why the tethers weren't all the same length. Uh, it's kind of a measure twice, cut once thing. Okay. Depends on who makes them. And um, so we have, a, we have a drawing, but it's not really specific. And then also, if, you, uh, if you're not successful with the uh, fiber 
Oh, the fiber Termination, timer got to cut back. Yeah, you're okay. Cutting it back a little bit. Uh, I've been making the tethers for a while now, and I'm not sure why I made these different. <laughs> Uh, these one, this actual, this tether was made, um, this one's probably three or four, four years old. We made this one in San Pedro. Oh. And it, it's not a huge difference. It, it shouldn't be. It's just the, uh, depends on where you measure. Like if you measure from the back of the BSR to the front of the BSR. So that's um, probably two meters on it each side right and uh, then when you're stripping it back we have a document that I follow every time so yeah it's, I was surprised it's a different length but a lot of times it's a team effort so um, one team's doing the mechanical bit so you have to you know, lay out the tether, cut it to length, and then um, strip it back and do the mechanical termination, which is kind of unique on this vehicle with the way the BSR is attached and how the uh, Kevlar is retained. And it's kind of a cone that captures the uh, aramid fibers. good to know that uh, we're not the only one that has very varying tether lengths. Yeah, it definitely. I've seen it before. It's a bit of preference, too. Some of us, uh, there's <laughs> advantage and disadvantage. Like we have a 50 meter one that we use for uh, ONC. Huh. Yeah, I see that. I'm sorry, I'll wait for you. 50 meters is a lot of tether to manage. How many floats do you put on it? Uh, we have one additional float, but the, uh, yeah, so you can see, like, at the moment I'm stretched all the way out here, and you don't get a very good uh, overview with Atalanta as the disadvantage, but the advantage is if we were doing you know, if we were zooming around quite a bit, for example, if we were hunting for, you know, bubble hunting, as I call it, um, we're all over the place, so uh, we can, you know, zoom around a bit more and chase chase bubbles. Um, Is that in range of where you can get right now, or too yeah, far out? I think so. I could come down, Dan, if you want. Yeah, you can come down five. Copy. Oh, there's a coral there, too. I didn't see that at first. I didn't either. Are you looking for the cucumber or the oh, coral? Let's look at the coral first. Because it might be new. Looks kind of purple. Be a little rough here as I'm pulling on Avalanche. You have five extra meters. Roger, thank you. Okay, Daryl, you can zoom in there. Yep, I think this here be Victor Gorgia. It's a very light purple. It's pretty. Yeah. Is this the first Victor Gorgia that we've seen? Of this dive, yeah. We saw it on, I think, dive number two. And, uh, it could push right in there now. The polyp zoom. So pretty. I'm stunned by how pretty this thing is. Pearl Star just waving at us. Yeah. So gorgeous. All right, science is happy when video is happy. Are you happy, don't? Very. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, 
up over to the uh, cucumber here. So Brian, a question, um, is albinoism a thing in the deep sea or even in the ocean in general? The ocean in general, absolutely. You can definitely find examples of albino creatures. Um, oh, oh, oh. I don't. Bye. You know, we have white morphs and stuff like that, but we don't really think of them as being albinos. We just think of them as different color morphs. Um, I can't think of ever seeing something in the deep sea that we thought was actual albino albinoism. Okay, you can zoom in through the dust there, maybe. Oh. All right, science is happy. Right there. Okay, go away. I'm loving all the sea cucumbers. Video change. Oh my gosh. Is it already that time? It I was is just thinking the same that thing. Time. I don't know. I feel like this just kind of flew by. I don't know if it's the ice cream <laughs> or. I think it was the ice cream. That was <laughs> mainly it. I definitely feel a lot more energetic after eating the coffee ice cream. Mm -hmm. All right. Everyone on shore will be hanging out here for just a minute as we change over staff in the van to the 8 to 12. Yeah. We'll be back with you momentarily. Front row up line. You know what I was just thinking? If anybody from Disney is listening, we would love to be able to string the little mermaid on the boat. Have a watch party of the little mermaid while yeah. on board. Anybody from Disney? I'm sure they, they have like a up. private jet. They could, you know, fly over us and drop drop it, it down, drop like on DVD. The DVD down. <laughs>
hello to everyone tuning in on live or at home. 8 to 12 signing in. So, science, hello. Science, science, is, science is still trying to settle in. Sciencing, roger. <laughs> well, science uh, is here. Stand by for science. <laughs> stand by for science. <laughs> it's 7.57, Samantha, just noted. Hi. Test, test. Hello, everyone tuning in. We're uh, just finishing up a watch shift, waving at people in the back row. <laughs> <laughs> we're almost ready. I think we're all a little loopy. I'm ready. End of a long day. End of a lovely Sunday with our ice cream day. Ice cream Sunday. Uh, looks like we're at the top of uh, this knoll that um, is our final waypoint of the dive. So we're waiting on science to determine what our next steps are, but we have since this morning, moved through this uh, little valley at the base of a guillot, moved upslope to the top of the guillot, and oh, great! Thanks, Dave. So, if you're watching on Nautilus Live, uh, HiPack, the navigation software that we use, is up on channel three, so you can see where we started. Um, up at this point, number one, waypoint one. Also says DP for. Dynamic positioning, that's, that was the point that we got the ship to this morning and then got it stable so we could start our dive. Um, so we've moved along this little canyon wall here and up the slope of the guillot to number five where we're uh, heading towards now. If I zoom out, you can see how extensive this guillot is. We also did um, a significant amount of mapping on this site last night, so we were prepared to dive here. This guillot is about 6,000 meters across. Wow. Let's give it in miles as well, three miles. How many feet? How about kilometers? Oh, let's do kilometers. Yeah, let's do kilometers. Let's say uh, 5.8 kilometers. Oh, what else we got? Uh, we got feet. <laughs> it is 19,000 feet across. That's a lot. That's a lot of feet. We'll go back to meters. <laughs> uh, so science, <laughs> here you've joined. Yeah. Hello. What uh, what would we like to do this evening? Uh, so first thing we'd like to fire off a Niskin for a blank eDNA sample. Roger. And then once we do that, we want to head on up to the top of the seamount or the knoll. knoll. And then we want to look. Uh, we want to rock from up there. We want to look around for some specific corals. If there's some sediment, we might want to try for a push core or two and then we'll see what time it is and then we can uh, kind of freelance a little bit and explore. Copy. So you've got a Niskin now? Yep. So we have 
two, three, four, five, six available. Wow. Number one is not available. Go ahead, data lab. Roger. Uh, yep, we've got the radio on. I'll so give Robert a heads up. Did you copy that, Robert? Yeah. Great. Copy that. Loud and clear. It's kind of quiet and clear. Adam, are we getting the sample here or are we moving up? Yes, right here. Thank you. It looks like we have a stock to you plug tell it in the background. Or it, it was before it faced down. <laughs> um, I think I can give you a genus too. That would be awesome. I yeah. Can log it. It's actually a species, Amphidicella. Okay, I'll um, write it real quick. Are you watching? Everybody's watching? Yeah. Everybody's watching. Got it. Watching. Very close. Nice. Which uh, number was that? Dose. Dose. And uh, Paolo, what number was the sample? Do you want me to say in Spanish? Por favor. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, cero ochenta. Cero ochenta, gracias. Awesome. Oh, oh, ¿Quieres okay. describir lo que estamos haciendo en español? En español? Uh, sí. <laughs> pues sí, claro, de lo que entendí de Adam, eh, vamos a intentar llegar al tope de la montaña submarina. Sí. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never actually had to explain any of this in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I've had this a, a same amount of topography. Mesa, mesa submarina? Mesa submarina, sí, hace sentido. Eh, estas montañas se caracterizan submarinas porque tienen... El tope no es puntiagudo, es plano, así que uh, parecen ser mesas. Y vamos a ver qué encontramos. Vamos a buscar eh, muestras de roca, eh, poder caracterizar la biología. Y ahora vamos a mover. Nos movemos. <risa> pues, uh, <risa> ¿dónde vamos? <risa> ciencia. Uh. Hacer ciencia. <risa> Ciencia. Where so, are we going? ¿Dónde uh, vamos? I'm trying to think. Uh, I can't remember how to say up. Oh. Uh, uh, arriba. 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 Vamos por arriba. <laughs> vamos para arriba. Okay. Yeah. Me encantó eso. <laughs> Go ahead. Stand by science. We're going to do a little ROV check. We're at 100.
That's why it's on. That's why it's on a cord. <laughs> oh, Jules, if it's not too late, what's the name of the salt sponge that you saw? Um, hold on one second. ¿Cómo se dice stock sponge? Uh, esponja. Esponja. De... En un palo. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. No sé. Um, it's amphidicella. Can I have your pen? I can write it. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, what's that? What, what, are, what are these drawings? They are like from previous watches. So. Vamos. Ready to go? Nos fuimos. Vamos. 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 Bridge now. Buenas, uh, podemos mover 50 metros a 155, por favor. Wow. Bridge is speechless. <laughs> <laughs> Probably I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> uh, 155. Are they understanding that? Samantha? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, Flavio's... Uh, oh, right, Flavio's yeah, once again. Flavio's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> Where are we going? What are we doing? 155. Samantha, are 50 we going? 50 metros a uh, 100. 50 y 6 y 5. ¿Ya? Yeah. Así vamos a intentar seguir hasta punto de ruta 5. <laughs> Exacto. <laughs> ok, sube. One, five, five. Okay, maybe my radio Spanish isn't so good. <laughs> <laughs> So, Adam, you're thinking we go up to 0.5 and then stay up there, or? Uh, yeah, I think we have a few things to do up there, and then we can see what time it is and if we want to try and do something else. Okay, and we skipped waypoint four. Yeah. I would like to, kind of like to see that little gully there, but it's not, I don't think we're going to have time. Okay. I like these little nooks right here. Yeah, I don't know what those are. Those little there's there's a lot of little overhanging structures. So sometimes mm, yeah. lava flows, submarine lava flows, will the crust solidifies, but the interior stays molten so and drains yep. away. So you get like kind oh, of a hollow thing. Okay, cool. But uh, I don't know. Oh, there it goes. It looks like we have another amphidicella. Yeah. Oh shoot, I'm looking at the still cam. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Dave, are we all the way wide on the See, look, I'm going to drive into the wall. Zoomed in. Oh, give yep, it pretty full much. Down, <laughs> <full> <laughs> yep, that's it. There. Like, I'm giving it lots of juice, and it's not even budging. Uh, yeah, something's amiss. 
but not a current thing, right? Doesn't seem like we're... No, there's there's some weird pressure issue when you get deep. Yeah. It's like something's, there's a relief valve or something that's let go. So what is a relief valve? I understand the concept, but it can't mean that it's, it's not like between the hydraulic fluid and the ocean, is it? No, it's between the hydraulic pressure side and the and the return side. Oh, okay. it just it's like a short circuit. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it, it keeps the pressure from spiking up too high. Right. So when you put more load on the system, then the pump works harder. But you don't want it to over pressurize, so the relief valve keeps the pressure from going too high. But oh, it kind of reminds me of. On the seawater pump on Alvin, we had that problem where yeah. the little pin inside was was uh, kind of failing or something. Yeah, on the on the VB system. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the autoclave valve. Right. Yeah. But only when there was enough pressure on it for that to yeah. happen. I don't like hydraulic systems because yeah. you get. You get these, it seems like it would be a simple thing, but it's not. Because you get all these complicated pressure issues. That, yeah. And then it's hard to troubleshoot when it takes, you know, when you got to go to 2,000 meters to get it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Though if it's all internal, couldn't you just boost up the pressure on deck to get it to to that? Maybe that's probably an unsafe thing uh, to yeah. do. Yeah, <laughs> you can't just keep jacking the power up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> keep this guy away from the robots. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, awesome. Can we zoom on this, please? Something to look yes. at. Yes. I am in need <laughs> of Victor Gorgia. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what we're nice. looking for. Uh, a okay. white purple Victor Gorgia? Or a well, lavender? I think there's, maybe there's some purple on the edges. I don't know. Probably have to get closer. Can we zoom in, Dave? Oh, actually. Wait. Wait for it. Is it just purple tinged? What's going on? <laughs> hmm. Huh. Okay, so maybe there, hold off on that. Well, it is. I think it is Victor Gorgia, but why are are there all the polyps pulled in, and so mm -hmm. we don't see much purple? Makes sense. Yeah. Is it just that they're attracted? I mean, it doesn't exactly look dead. Definitely well, what are all the knobbies on there? Maybe they're. Uh, they look like retracted are polyps. Yeah. Are they polyps? Okay. Yeah. Um. Sorry. Let's get. We'll get yeah. I, okay, let's go second. for it. Okay. Bridge nav. Hold position. Oh, oh hermit crab. Do your thing. <laughs> Here it goes. Wait, what? I missed There's a hermit crab oh. below the Victor Gorgia. I don't think we've seen Neat. one of those in a while. So, what, what part of this do you get without a snake star <laughs> climbing all over it? Is this only uh, one? Star? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, wow. It's like the, that's, that's only one. one. That's, yeah, that's pretty wild. One. This piece on the right looks. Like, oops. Yeah, that looks oh, this one down. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh. Nope, that's a very big circle. But yeah, yeah, that one looks good. So we're sampling? Yeah. Yep. Where's this going to go? Oh, got me. <laughs> Come on, sick. Uh, What do we have here? Well, looks like it's going to have to go starboard. We got. One little, which is D, the most aft box, and two bigs, E and F. Trains. 
Zoom in, Dave. Moving? What's happening here? Stay still. Hey, I got a plant better here. Yeah. Goof it up. Is that on <laughs> There's an opioid um, <laughs> crawling in front of the live cam, <laughs> the still cam. Great. Oh, yes. Wow. Wonderful. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. I don't got a branch. It's changing over to sample. Yep. This would be sample 081. Thank you. Kind of excited for sample 149 because it'll be NA149 149. Okay. Okay. Coming out. Oh, yeah. Very That's cool. true. Yeah. Gotta have something to look forward to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're two weeks in, in case yep. anyone didn't know. <laughs> uh, at least there's still ice cream. We'll have two more ice creams, and that's <laughs> two things to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll manifest burgers again too. Yeah, I hope and pray. Or tacos. Nice. Tacos, that was tacos. D. D. What was that? You can't fire me, I quit? Is that what was going on? <laughs> Stand by for pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Robert's leaving the van. He's tired of this. Britney Spears Ten minutes headset in. adjustment. <laughs> oh, no. We got another. They're like tether reps. <laughs> Only like getting rid of tether wraps was so easy. Chat, this don't, watch don't, ends don't at 12. There. 8 to 12. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> too soon. <laughs> and then we have a question. Well, go for it. What are we yeah. got? Yeah, <laughs> just, just making sure. Okay. Um, is the process that causes the overhangs of the igneous rock similar to how lava tubes form? Whoa, good question. The uh, the overhangs. <laughs> oh, like the little like protuberances. The one the, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, somewhat similar. So in this case, they're kind of controlled by cooling, right? So they're cooling from the edges and that can force uh, flow towards a central kind of channel. Uh, and that's one way that lava tubes can form on land, but oftentimes on land, they're also controlled by topography. So they might occupy a, an existing channel and, and then roof over. Um, but yeah, there's aspects of these types of submarine flows that are very similar to processes we see on land, but oh. just with more cooling. And the lava tubes on land often have a, a headspace like above the lava. These ones probably, in something this scale, this small, probably don't uh, until the flow stops and the lava drains out. Oh. Ooh. Just what a most diversity we've seen in the uh, end <laughs> <we've seen. laughs> in a while. Five. There's a black coral. Stichopathies? No. No. What's the um, umbrella pathies? Umbrella pathies, right? Umbrella. Uh, okay. Zoanthid covered something or other. I think that's a plexorid. And that looks another like another one of those Victor Gorges um, with stuff retracted. Yeah. Maybe nothing left it looks alive a little on that. Bubble gum. Oh. Do you think? White Paragorgia? Maybe. I don't see a single polyp on that. Yeah, is it possible to zoom anymore? I want to get a good view of I'm at where full the zoom, should but be. Okay. I'll bet Bob can get in there a little bit closer. I think we also have an Anthemastus to the left. We have a possible ID of Forsu White, Paragorgia, and Plexarid. Yeah, because look at these, the yeah. knobbiness. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a White, Paragorgia. Ooh, ooh. Oh, did you want to look? No, no, no. The colors are beautiful. Yeah, right? So I got a question for our coral experts. Seems like there's tissue in the polyps and then some sort of tissue that covers the skeleton. And are those like different kind of body parts? What is that? Is that like the foot of an anemone and the polyps of an anemone kind of thing? Or the frondy th bits? Yeah, I'm actually really not sure what it is like covering the outside. So it's um, yeah, those are zoanthids. Paula, what do you what do you think? What do you know about that? I can look it up for the team. Yeah, <laughs> and explain. I really don't remember. I don't think that the polyp extends outside of the sclerite. Oh. Yeah, I don't think so. I think either. that's the. Are pigment. we good on this zoom? Um. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Um. I. I mean, we've seen that with like zoanthids. Zoanthids right? do it too, yeah. They have. Well, a, is that what's covering the bottom of that stalk? What I'm saying is, I think that that might just be the zoanthid. Well, but a pink. I think it depends Paragorgia, on the yeah. The whole skeleton looks pink. Yeah. But if it died, it would look white, right? Um. Yeah, it, it depends on the coral. Like hard corals don't have that skinny the skin, skin the skin on stuff. the outside. What about octocorals? But octocorals
So we have to, are we still moving or are we? We are moving. Okay. Yeah, we're about 20 meters into a 50 meter move. Well, there's a whip and a unstocked crinoid. It's is like what a brisingid. A brisingid? Oh. Yeah. And a bamboo whip. There's a great uh, blog post about brisingids by Christopher Ma, the oh. echinoderm expert from the Smithsonian. I would recommend awesome. a read about how they got named after a Norse goddess, like they were jewels of the deep. Um, can we zoom on this coral down here, please? I think it might be something covered in zoanthids, maybe paragorgia. Am I missing what's going on here? Oh, there you go. Uh, this right here. I kick it on? Yeah. Sorry. That's why I'm rocking. Um, and the unbranched whip, I would say, is Keratoisidae. Okay. That would have been branched. Yeah. Paragorgia with zoanthids and opioids. Awesome. Ooh, look at those polyps. So pretty. If we could just hold for one more second so I can get a shot on the still cam, that would be wonderful. Are you getting it? Or in, the, in the process. Okay. We are all set now. Thank you. Right. Time to go. And shout out to all our new viewers tuning in. We do have a question um, about the, the brittle stars in the coral. Why do the uh, brittle stars wrap themselves around the corals? Is it protection? Are they eating it? Slow dancing? <laughs> 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 um, so they're not eating the corals that we've observed. Um, we think that it's either a commensalist or a symbiotic relationship between the coral and the brittle stars. Um, so it is likely to um, like increase the amount of like flow that's passing them because they like feed on the particles in the water column. Being higher up on on this coral increases the amount of food that they're going to encounter and be able to feed on. Um, and there's some evidence that coral may be benefiting from the brittle stars too, um, preventing things like zoanthids from. Um, from settling on the coral. Um, yeah, there was even an instance where there was an oil spill and they found that the corals with um, brittle stars were being like cleaned. You can't see me, but I'm doing quotation marks, like cleaned <laughs> by <laughs> brittle stars. Hmm. Evidence remains inconclusive whether or not they were slow, slow dancing as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, jury's still out on that one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think there's oh. a oh. small bathypathies. What's that? Whip. Oh. To the right of the lasers. Yeah, there's a, looks like an old cup coral. Yeah. yeah. I think there was, that's a Magnus spiralis, and that's a branched, um, Bamboo coral. Do we have time to zoom on the bamboo? We already did. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. the same one? Yeah. The same? yeah. Oh my gosh. So Adam, apparently it is a different tissue from the polyps. Oh. It's called mesoglea and it's a type of hydrostatic skeleton that they produce. Cool. I didn't know that. That's so cool. Right? We've been either. When I learned about coral anatomy, yeah, we were there. looking at like stony corals. The hard corals. Yeah. So I never even thought about that. Wow, that's so beautiful.
Wait, I feel like there's so much more to this than with hard corals. <laughs> oh, there's a uh, uh, there's quite a large yeah. coral there in the Atlanta oh. view. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Where? Just down. Oh, bottom oh line. yeah, bottom. yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Let's let's do that. Left. And we're just finishing a ship move. So we can look around a bit. Ooh, shrimp. I keep reacting to things in the still cam. <laughs> another question from a chat. Why are the rocks you see black and not another color? Um, so there these rocks are all covered or coated with a crust of iron manganese oxyhydroxide. Right. And it uh, uh, precipitates from seawater very slowly over time, like a millimeter um, per million years. I've moved along quite a bit. And there it is, uh, right in the middle, middle of my screen there. So we can't see the original rock. Uh, but if we could, a lot of it would still be black because it's basalt. Uh, or, you know, some variation thereof. But up here we might be getting into old uh, carbonates, old reefs, so that part would look a lot whiter. But it all looks kind of the same, and we don't know what we've got until we bring it on deck and cut it open. That's a pretty tall... Zoom in, Dave? Oh, thank you. Something. I'm guessing a bamboo. Cool. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I see. Oop. Yeah. Is it nodal or internodal? Internodal. Grab with an okay. Internodal bamboo. All retracted. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get a shot in the still cam real quick. Oh yeah, there's the bamboo and internodal. All right, I think we're good on that zoom. All right. Um, it's Keratoi Sydney. It might be D1 clade, but I'm gonna keep looking into that. Noted. Thank you. I would just write Keratoi said in a internodal. Okay, got it. <laughs> Thanks. And then what I also find interesting, you know, we're at about 1900 meters, um, and these corals, they do have color. Mm -hmm. um, so what gives these corals their color, even though there's, there's no sunlight? Yeah, they these corals have um, protein pigment. Um, so you'll notice that most corals at this depth are like red or white or brown. Can you zoom in, Dave? Um, so Quick red light doesn't penetrate this deep in the water column. It's like and so this makes them, yeah, it does look like norella. Um, Actually, no, no it's, it's a bamboo. Um, it, it makes them basically invisible. We get on so this? it's like a way of Can avoiding predation. Um, yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Cool crinoid. Cool. Yeah, that's the basic answer. Thank you. Um, <laughs> also, they don't have uh, zooxanthellae, mm. which right. corals in shallow water have, right. um, which mm. has um, chlorophyll pigments because they are photosynthetic, and there is no photosynthesis happening down here. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, and then is there a way to tell how recent the lava flowed by looking at it? Can you tell from testing samples? Uh, yes, yeah, so you can't really tell from looking at it, but you can tell by using radiogenic isotopes in the samples. And uh, samples from not this particular seamount, but others across this whole region right. uh, show ages that are either around 70 to 80 million years old or 30 million years old. Wow. And so it kind of confounds people about how, when, and where these volcanoes first were, you know, produced. And so when you're testing the samples, is the process really like complex? Sorry, Samantha, is it okay if Robert gets in front of me before we move? Just, I'm, yeah. I'm close, I'm, I'm drifting in there. And Zipping. Let's do it. Watch me go. Yeah, oh. the, ooh. You want me to pause it? Um, you zoom in. What are we zooming? You want me to pause? No, no, no. You want me to pause the ship? Or are you just going to zip ahead? I'm, I'm trying to zip. Okay. You never know. Roger. Uh, you never Sorry know when you're going to come to a screeching halt. Can I have a paper? <laughs> yeah, so the, the process It'll to take us a minute to get started again. Oh. Use the radiogenic isotopes for Thanks. dating here is pretty complex. You right. have to separate out minerals, uh, crystals from the rock. You have to irradiate them. Uh, and then you have to heat them up slowly in steps and measure oh, wow. how much of the daughter isotopes are are emitted at each heating step. Talagorcha. Wow. Thank you. It is a bit easier with the longer tether further away. Yeah. It's once the uh, yeah, it's it, it it has advantages when a branched what. bamboo. Right now is a. No. Did you get to the gym today? I. Um, Still time. I was working hard. Um, <laughs> uh, on my book. Oh. I read. I read. You're writing a book. Um. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> or someone else did. Oh, then, someone else did, you know. and you were checking their work. Yeah. I was just checking. Zoom in, Dave. It's already been published, but I was, you know. I think that's Antha, Anthamastus. Antha, wait. I think it's Zoanthid City. Am I saying the right thing? No, Acanthagorgia, not Anthamastus. Acanthagorgia? Uh, I think it is. Are, th are those Zoanthids on there, or is that the actual coral? I think that's the actual coral. Wow, cool. Um, I just want to look at the polyps a little bit, or the branching. Uh, bridge now. Uh, let's hold position. You got more zoom? Nope, that's all me right there. So folks who are looking past the coral to the rock will notice <laughs> it looks all pebbly. The pretty yellow <laughs> coral. Uh, Would you say it looks but Oh, look at that. Oh, what I is that on there? Oh, Dumbo? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Octopus? Dumbo, Octopus? Oh, Dumbo, Dumbo. Dumbo. In at Atlanta Cam. Oh, oh. oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Zoomed by. A jello Dumbo Octopus? Yeah. For a brief moment. Oh, man. We crossed paths. All right, well, now I don't really even feel like talking about the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back to your yes. <laughs> Was it really try a to, double try to follow octopus that up. <laughs> oh, my For gosh. For those of you so who exciting. are really looking to relax, and then I can tell you more about the rocks. <laughs> um. Those of us with insomnia or anything like that. <laughs> 
Paula, I lied. That was a flex sword. Flex sword? Okay. Oh, man. No problem. Uh, what happened, Annie? Did you get no. to see the octopus? Yeah, but I was hoping. Like, you wanted a little more uh, that's yeah. Action. Yeah. more action. Yeah. Well, we know they they exist. I think we were we were lucky we to were, have that yeah. moment with the octopus. Yes. Highlight. Highlight. That was pretty awesome. Is it? Like, are they, they're found at these, um, this deep? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, wow. And deeper. Yeah. What? They're usually All on the, the seafloor, though. Yeah. Yeah, we don't normally see them in the water column like that. We have the coolest watch. We have the coolest watch. Yes, the watch with many names. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a hollow three? Hollow yeah. three? Sea cucumber. But the most interesting thing about this shot is really what this Holotherian is resting on. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you may notice that <laughs> the rock looks kind of pebbly. <laughs> Might you call it petroidal? I, well, I would, only because it looks like a bunch of grapes. And of course, the Greek for that is something related to petroidal. <laughs> <laughs> But that is the that is the name for that mineral texture where it's uh, lumpy and it usually forms because of radiating crystals, but in this case it's because the manganese precipitates onto kind of little high points and it builds up these little balls that essentially grow together. And the word is botryoidal. Botryoidal, yeah. Botryoidal. So B O T R I O. No, no. B O T R Y. Ah, oh. Oh. that's where the Greek comes in. Botryoidal. Botryoidal. Some Wait. people say botryoidal. Okay. Uh, so How do you say it? Botryoidal. Because it's B O T R Y O I D A L. Botryoidal. 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 Science word. B O T R Y O I D A L. D A L. Another Victor Gorgia and a sea star. Oh, uh, we've seen that one before with a little bit of ombre. Yeah. Coloring. I don't remember what it was. Are we looking at the sea star or the? Uh, yeah. Can we look at the sea star, please? The Greek botrys is a bunch of grapes. Oh. Um. And actually, modern Latin is botryoides. Modern Latin? What yeah. does that mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mid-18th century, it looks like. Zoom in, okay. Dave. Oh, and there's a rock pen. Oh, yeah, a rock pen. Cool. Nice. That kind of looks like the one we were supposed to be looking for the other day. Does it? Uh, no, I th that's a, a C pen. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, Kofo Belemnon. It would be found in soft sediment. Hmm. Annie, your question about the yeah. color. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, this thing looks like all dressed up with nowhere to go. I mean, no mm. one's ever going to see that besides us. Well, let's get a, a good beauty shot then. Okay. Is this its best side? <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to flip it over? I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, I just might, you know, maybe a different arm. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, oh, no, don't get my my fifth arm. <laughs> <laughs> Paolo, what do you think about ID? Oh, let's look it up. <laughs> okay. Um, the C pen or rock pen is Anthoptilum. Can we unzoom this? Unzoom. I don't think it's. Goniester. Um. Er. Some sort of Valva Tida, I believe. Yeah. Cool shot from Atalanta. Yeah. Oh, 
Looks like there's a sponge in the background there. Looks like a stocked sponge. Yeah, zoom in, Dave. I mean, that thing fully looks like mm. a mushroom. I don't... <laughs> You're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is a eupleptelid, and it's uh, one with that we saw earlier, Amphidocella. Does it have something wrapped around the base? Oh, it kind of looks like oh, it. Maybe a, a worm ophir. or mollusk. Looks like a... Looks like the arm of a... Ophiroid. <laughs> Why can't I say that word now? <laughs> oh. Anemone. <laughs> ophiroid. <laughs> is there any... Greek in that? Yeah, let's find out. It sounds like it. Hey, can you give me a little leash? Come down. Yeah, can you give me a bounce? Ophis means snake in Greek. Ah. And aura, O U R A, means tail. So, mm. O pheroid. Cool. <laughs> Ophiroid. 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 Oh, okay. it's a baby Ophiroid on the stalk. Aww. Aww, that's so cute. Or, I mean, it could be a small one. I don't know. Yeah. I think I got an ID. That's cool. Oh, yeah. On our sea yeah. star. On our sea star. That's awesome. Um. All right, I think we're cool on the sponge. Yeah, we're good on that. I think it's benthopectinidae. Cheer cheerious. Uh, I'm going to spell it for you. <laughs> I can try and find the picture Keir ID. Keiraster, maybe? Did they say that it's with a cut or a cha? Uh, beats me. Um, so many sea stars. It's under sea stars other. <laughs> A sea star. <laughs> okay, here you go. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jules. Yep. That's a great coral sketch, by the way. Thank you. I'm going to put a panda next to it. So it can be like a bamboo coral. A panda? Oh, yeah. oh that's, that's genius, adorable. actually. Ooh. What is nice that? Like a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> that was oh, yesterday. No. <laughs> We've gone too far <laughs> speaking hamburgers into existence. <laughs> It looks more like a taco to me. Uh, <laughs> I have to pull up there as you're coming under me, otherwise. Oh, there's something yeah. cool next to it there, too, like a oh, black coral. Oh, maybe bathy poppies? Wow, look at the arms of that squat lobster sticking out, too. Yeah, great squat lobster. Can we zoom on the squat lobster for fun? Thanks. And for the still cam. It's kind of fuzzy. <laughs> right? Yeah. That <laughs> looks it's so a fuzzy. like a spider. I was about yeah. to say, it has the... Yeah. Oh, wow! Wait, it's like the pinchers of a That's in. so cool. But maybe it, it's just their legs are crunched up in an odd way. If you could increase the screen size on the on the still cam page for me. Yeah, stand by. Yeah. Oh, yes. Perfect. So bathy pathies? Yeah, bathy pathies. So That's fuzzy. fun to say. It certainly is. Oh, wow. Oh, good shot, Dave. It's oh. really hard not to say little guy when you see one of these. Wow. Adam, remember you said you wanted an or an animal to cuddle with? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> not <laughs> it. <laughs> this is not okay. Not <laughs> it. It's like fuzzy. <laughs> good question, <Wow>. Annie. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it, give it to Adam what he asked for. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when you said that dumb you thing about it. Oh, hey, what's this? Uh, Something else on the coral. Oh, Amph oh that's a uh, uh, polychaete, yeah. Polychaete. Oh, there it is. I think. I know I've said this before, but 
once you zoom in, <laughs> there's like yeah. a million things to see. It's crazy. You haven't said it today, though, so okay. we'll allow it. But this is a really unusual squat lobster. I forgot the name of the little thing. The little the isopod? Uh, polychaete worm. Polychaete. Oh, I don't think I passed this back. Sorry. Thank you. Great shot. There's a few polychaetes. Well, you can even see the lobster's little feeder antennas. Aww. Little feathers. Oh, yeah. So that's how that it, mostly how it eats? It's yeah. It doesn't use those the claws for anything? <gasps> to hunt? I'm not sure. Nope. Just to, to just battle. to haunt our dreams. <laughs> 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 it's so They could be more terrible. sensory. Yeah. Oh, right, know, right. They're using their claws still to oh, move okay. things to their mouth. It's the fuzziest looking taste. squat lobster we've seen. I think it'd be cool to have that many legs. Yeah. So I guess it doesn't eat polychaetes. Mm, doesn't seem to be too interested. I wonder what it's like positioned there for. Filter feeding, I guess. Are you done with this guy? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. so. I could watch it for a while, but let's be done <laughs> with it. It's a stunning shot. So probably worth remembering when we tell Dave what a great shot that was, what a team effort this is to like <laughs> get the ship where it needs to be, get the vehicles off the deck, right. control mm -hmm. the Hercules, control Atalanta, move the ship around, make insightful comments, you know, <laughs> that, all of it, all of it uh, comes together for, you know, discovery. Yeah, it really requires a lot of collaboration, a lot of communication. Sponge? Sponge. Oh, yeah. Can you zoom on that, please? Zoom in, Dave. Yeah, it looks like a... Huh. It's a weird shape. I think we're seeing the... The back side of back it? Backside, maybe? Yeah. Can you... Uh, spin? Uh, <laughs> shoot it? Shoot it. <laughs> Shoot it! No, I think she said spin. Spin, oh. but I said it with that the That reminds I me. Don't know. There was that spin. amazing Toyota truck ad about 20 years ago. We're like, <laughs> they're like, we're here to look at the Loch Ness monster, and then it jumps out, and someone yells, "Shoot it!" <laughs> The only thing we're gonna shoot is with lasers. And video. And video. So so you plug Teled for sure, but... Uh, oh, there, that's, yeah, that's cool. But, but that's like a hood. Happening there? Yeah, it does. Go for the zoom again, Dave. Oh, there's another one. Oh over my there. gosh, yeah, they're all over the place. Hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so cool. Hmm. Oh. I have too many tabs open. 
If you um, push that focus a little further, do we see what the inside looks like? Okay, I might have an ID. Ooh. Uh, I guess not. Oh, you can see the attachment threads at the Ooh. base. That's really neat. That's a really cool wow. And there's like a tiny little of ophiroid inside. <laughs> so cool. Carry on. Carry on. Ah, uh, yeah. And then a uh, chat wants to know, is there anything, um, is there such thing as a deep sea fungus? Oh, we had that question before. So the answer is yes, but I don't know of any that are kind of macro fauna that you oh, can see. Okay. They're like uh, more like single celled organisms. It's like a plexorid to me. Zoom in, Dave. Hmm. Maybe a paragorgia with. Oh, yeah. Another paragorgia with zoanthids, man. What's this thing back there? Is that a black? Those look like hydroids. Oh. Lots of hydroids. Wow. Uh, actually, maybe it is a black coral. Maybe it no, is it another like coral covered in hydroids. Yeah, it does look like hydroids. And it looks like maybe um, barnacles, too. Mm. Let's just say hydroids because that thing is... Yeah. All right, we're good. Thank you. Hydroids is one of the most common types of biofouling in the coral nurseries. And when you touch them, they, they itch so much. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> they have a lot of stinging cells, I think, wow. or something. No. I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> They're very but pretty, but... Fireworm sounds worse, though. It looks like there's a brisinid yeah, but over there. Yeah, but at least you, you have the anticipation. You're seeing the fireworm. Uh. You might know it's coming <laughs> to get you. But the hydrate <laughs> is just there, and you, you see see it coming to get you. <laughs> mm. Do you not wear gloves? Are you supposed to wear gloves, Paula? Anemone? I'm supposed to wear gloves, Adam. Anemone. I, 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 for, I always forget <laughs> like, like my glasses. Oh, they're with your glasses. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Wait, I, which do you prefer? You see it coming or you don't? <laughs> she likes to see it coming. You like to see it coming? I yeah. think that's more terrifying because like, you run for your life. I can defend myself if I see it coming. Especially just, trying to swim away from a fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're trying to swim, but it's like... They come after you? No, they, they don't really come after you, but if you see them like crawling after oh your coral that you're just putting <laughs> uh -huh. there, uh -huh. you can see it coming and they're uh -huh. just like, no, nope, you're not coming here and move it around. Depending on the type of scientist, they, some of my coworkers have a kill count of the fireworks. Oh. Oh. We have too many. RV, are we happy for a move? Double I'm kind of stumped by that coral. I mean, not coral, a uh, sponge. Let's do two zero meters, one five five. <laughs> Holothurian? Can you zoom in, Dave? Uh, it looks like a holothurian, yeah. Yep, that is a holothurian. There's a dead urchin. What? One five five. Two zero meters. We're doing smaller steps. Possible ID, it's polyopogon. Is it? Let me look into that. Okay. 
nothing comes up when I look that up. <laughs> Give me a, a family that I can look up. Right. <laughs> Not you personally. Any. <laughs> <laughs> Not anyone in particular, actually. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. And this is for our ROVs. Um, what is the difference between uh, uh, Hercules and Atalanta? Um, Adla <laughs> okay. Atalanta is, uh, is tethered to the vessel, so Atalanta provides a more stable platform for Hercules to maneuver around the seafloor and the bottom. So while I'm connected to the, the ship, I do have maneuverability. I can move uh, uh, within a radius uh, to monitor um, Herc and uh, move up and down. Is it? Flex on? Can they grow that? Um, There's a yeah. Yeah. Another pair yeah. of Syrianthus. Cool. Syrianthus. Thank you Thanks, to Chad. whoever is awesome. that. I wonder what that is. Oh. Pantone 18 um, 1706 is Ooh. Black Plum. Black Plum? Black I like Black that. Plum. That's about Plum. right. Yeah. Pantone. 18, 17, uh, Paula, did you get the ID for the anemone? Is it this one? Serianthus? Yes. Oh, uh, change? Yeah, that's Yeah, right. change. Serianthus? Serianthus? Okay. Yeah. Oh. C E R C C E R I A N T H U S. Can you repeat those last two? The what? Those, those last two letters? Oh, U.S. U.S. Okay, awesome. Serianthus. Thank you. Paragorgosanthids. That's been the surprise, organism of the night. Surprise, surprise. Oh, oh, and oh, they're mollusks. Mollusks. Mollusks? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. It's like, oh, I wasn't doing anything. There's two of them. There's one on the other side, too. Uh. Oh. Wow. Hello. Gorgeous. Acantha. <laughs> Metalla. Metalla, gorgeous. I feel like this still cam predicts the future. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. There's a cool core.